Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. I'm Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary, and we're continuing our series of podcasts and talking about ways of singing the Psalms. If you're familiar with our chapel services here at Kramer Chapel, whether in person or watching online, uh, you'll notice that we often uh, include an antiphon with the Psalms when we, we sing them. Um, an antiphon is sort of like a little refrain that is usually sung at least before and after the Psalms, sometimes periodically between some of the verses of the Psalms. And uh, the, the purpose of, of the antiphon is sort of to encapsulate and summarize some of the main ideas of the psalm or to, uh, to reflect on one of the themes of, of the particular Sunday of the church year that that psalm is assigned for. Now, a very practical question our students ask a lot in liturgics classes, well, how do you know which verse to choose for the antiphon? Well, you don't have to guess on that. The, the lectionary makes that suggestion for you. Here's this little book that has the propers of the day. Um, for instance, uh, we'll be talking about the psalm for the baptism of our Lord uh, in the three-year series at Psalm 29. And over where you have all the scripture readings listed, and it lists the psalms, then in parentheses it'll tell you antiphon, verse, whatever. In this, this case, it's antiphon, verse 3. So that's one place where um, uh, that information is, is given for you. In the, uh, the hymn selection guide, this other resource that, uh, that uh, we use and is a very useful tool for all pastors and church musicians, that same information is, is given. For instance, here is, is the listing, here's the baptism of our Lord, and then the, the pericopes are, are listed, and that same information is given right there uh, to tell you what the suggested verse is to be the, the psalm antiphon. Now, the easiest way then to use that antiphon is, is simply to use it before and after the psalm, before verse 1 and after the Gloria Patri. And the easiest musical way to do that is to simply sing it to the same psalm tone that you're using for the, the rest of the psalm. So the leader, whether it's one person or a choir or an ensemble, would sing that particular antiphon verse and then verse 1. And then the congregation would sing verse 2 and, and so forth. Well, if uh, we here at Kramer Chapel use a lot of different musical forms of the antiphon besides the psalm tones. Sometimes we'll use a musical uh, composition that's, that's been published somewhere and we use from a different collection. Sometimes Cantor Mockermer and I will write something on our own for us to use very easily. Um, and we want to give you an example of, of that. Uh, for instance, uh, here's an antiphon for Psalm 29 uh, that, that I wrote, and we're making this available for anyone who wants to use it. Uh, and again, this is verse 3 of the, the psalm, and it simply it sounds like this. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. And even looking at that text of verse 3, you can see why this is so appropriate to use on the baptism of our Lord with, with the, uh, the references there in, in the text. So how we could use this is uh, to have your, your choir or soloist or whoever is leading that psalm would, would sing this accompanied. And then the, uh, the leader would continue with verse 1 of the psalm. So the leader would, would finish the antiphon, The God of glory thunders. And then take verse 1, and I'm suggesting we use tone A. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And then the congregation would sing verse 2, and we'd go back and forth. I'd also suggest, because Psalm 29 is a little uh, uh, more lengthy than some psalms, that the, uh, the leader also sing this antiphon after verse 6. And if we're doing that antiphon, between verses of the, the psalm, I think the best time to do that is when it would be natural for that leader to have his or her turn to sing. So, for instance, we're having the leader sing the antiphon and then verse 1, then the congregation sings 2, leader sings 3, congregation sings 4, leader sings 5, congregation sings 6, and then they're going to be waiting for that choir or soloist to sing. And there we could sing the antiphon again, and then the leader would sing verse six, and oh, sorry, verse seven, and uh, then uh, continue the rest of the psalm. Following the glory patri, we'd sing the antiphon again. 
Um, so we're providing this antiphon as a, uh, a free tool for, for anyone to use. If you find it useful, uh, please use it. Let us know what, what you think. Um, and one of the great things about working with the lectionary is not only is Psalm 29, the, the psalm for the baptism of our Lord, coming up relatively quickly, but then just keep that in your back pocket and we have that psalm that shows up again on Holy Trinity Sunday uh, later at, at the end of spring. So uh, if it was useful for you uh, on the, the one Sunday, you can save it and use it again a second time. Thanks for watching.